extra security was going to calm protesters down, then we're wrong. We've been out with the military now for about two hours. So far, they haven't found anything. Qatar announced that after 57 years, it's leaving OPEC. The tiny Gulf nation claims to be the world's biggest exporter of natural gas and says that from January 1st, it'll focus on that rather than oil. But the breakup may have more to do with OPEC's de facto leader, Saudi Arabia, which last year blockaded the kingdom when Qatar refused to go along with Saudi foreign policy demands. Over the weekend, President Trump and China's President Xi Jinping agreed to hit pause on their trade war. While they're just starting a 90-day negotiation period, Trump's already claiming wins. He tweeted that farmers will be a, quote, big and fast beneficiary of a deal that hasn't been made, and that China says it'll reduce and lift tariffs on U.S. cars, a claim China's foreign ministry spokesperson refused to acknowledge. The family of E.J. Bradford Jr., the man killed at an Alabama mall when police mistook him for a gunman, have released an independent autopsy. It shows he was shot three times from behind and Bradford's family says that means he was running away, not threatening anyone. One activist told Vice News if the officer, who has not been identified so far, is not charged with murder by noon tomorrow, they will publicly release his name, address, and photograph. What you have done was destroyed my family, his mother, my wife, his siblings. There's no justice if you get off with this. Tumblr is putting a complete ban on nude and sexually explicit images, after the company admitted that last month it discovered a page with child pornography. Thousands of pages curated for niche interests now show error pages. Tumblr says it'll allow for some exceptions, including political imagery and art. The government says these were the most violent protests in Paris in over 50 years. On Saturday, 133 people were injured and more than 400 were arrested. The movement began three weeks ago on social media, with calls to protest attacks on fuel. But it's grown into a working class revolt against the economic policies of President Emmanuel Macron. 27-year-old Jimmy Moreno came in from a nearby suburb. He works for the railways and voted for Macron. C'est le peuple, tout bêtement, sans opinion politique. Nous sommes dans la rue tous par solidarité. La politique, enfin, notre politique, elle est contre The yellow vests that Jimmy and others are wearing have become a symbol. A law requires drivers to carry them, so they're easier to spot. Now, it's making their movement harder to ignore. On retrouve une part d'humanité envers tout le monde. Tout le monde redevient humain. On est là pour une seule cause. Tout le monde met ses différents de côté. Le peuple français. Exactement. Nous sommes le peuple français. Rien d'autre. What's going on now? What are they chanting? La démission de Macron. C'est ce qu'on souhaite. En premier, démission de Macron et changement de république pour être dans une vraie démocratie. The taxes are designed to push drivers off the road to lower emissions, but people who can't afford to live in cities see it as a tax on the poor. Macron's interior ministry responded to the violence by deploying almost 70,000 officers, including 5,000 in Paris. If the government thought that the extra security was going to calm protesters down, they were wrong. They've been here since 8 in the morning, and the police have been tear-gassing them all day. By the afternoon, violent protesters were flipping cars and setting them on fire. In the center of Paris, they smashed windows and attacked cafes and shops. Macron returned from the G20 in Argentina to take stock. But the government is preparing for more protests this weekend. You've had three weeks of protests now. People have died. There have been hundreds who have been injured and hundreds more who have been arrested. The government hasn't taken this serious enough, have they? 
The government, I take it very, very seriously, but it's not only just a citizen protest, it's also a very violent one uh, because of some people uh, from the far left and the far right uh, we had on Saturday. Away from the, the, the protests that were violent, there are still yellow vest protesters who say, we represent the working and middle classes and we are the people that want to be listened to. Will you be responding to them? Of course, and we are responding to them since the day we were elected. But Macron here. has increased fuel tax, he's slashed wealth um, tax, he has loosened labour laws. How is that listening but to the working laws, and, and middle Labour laws is the way that you can get more and more people employed in France. But I think people listen to what they want to listen. I think people are able to listen to the change that are implemented in their daily lives. But for taxes, they don't see the taxes that are decreasing, they just see the taxes that are increasing. When the protests became too violent on Saturday, Jimmy left. He believes the police are too heavy-handed. Voilà, c'est ça qu'ils nous ont envoyé. Elles ont été utilisées euh, samedi euh, 24 novembre. Donc, euh, les forces policières ont utilisé ça contre nous, contre le peuple. Do you think that the scenes of violence that we've seen at the protests will undermine the credibility of the Yellow Vest movement? Bien sûr que ça va nuire au mouvement, mais ça peut aussi le renforcer. Parce que le problème, c'est que justement, c'est toujours Monsieur Tout le Monde qui est dans le mouvement des Gilets Jaunes. Ceux qui y participent sont en train de voir la violence du gouvernement envers nous. Et justement, c'est en train d'attiser une violence en nous qu'on n'avait pas auparavant. Et donc, pour l'instant, ça ne va pas terminer. Pour l'instant, ce n'est pas forcément une révolution, mais ça sent le début d'une révolution. On Saturday, Andres Manuel López Obrador took the oath of office as the new president of Mexico. He's the first leftist to reach the presidency in 70 years. And by this morning, he was boasting that his new approach is already having at least one tangible effect. Se redujo el número de homicidios. El promedio es 50 homicidios en los dos días. 50 murders a day is definitely an improvement from the country's recent average of more than 80. But to make any long-term progress, Lopez Obrador will have to get a handle on the crisis that's driving the violence. Mexico's war against the drug cartels and the cartels' wars against each other. Entonces, Entonces es fácil para aprender a hacer eso. Si tú me querías enseñar si usted, a hacerlo, yo lo aprendo. Si usted quiere, sí. Si usted mm. quiere, sí. Pero pues imagínese que le digo que se puede morir más adelante. Muchos no quieren aprender. Lo he hecho, yo ahorita empiezo a hacer vapor. Esos son olores muy fuertes que no puede respirar uno y hace uno que tosa. <risa> This is one of 2,000 meth labs run by the Sinaloa cartel in the city of Culiacán. The cartel calls these makeshift labs offices. This one churns out more than 300 pounds of meth every single month. Entonces, todas las cápsulas, todas las drogas, toda la meta que haces acá es para ir para los Estados Unidos. ¿Para Estados Unidos? Sí, para Estados Unidos, para Canadá, para hasta donde, hasta donde sepa, hasta donde mi patrón diga. Meth production was on the decline in the U.S. after the government clamped down on one of the key ingredients, pseudoephedrine, in 2006. 
but the demand for the drug never went away. Production just shifted south. In the previous five years, the amount of meth seized at the U.S.-Mexico border has almost tripled. ¿Por qué piensas que el tráfico de metanfetamina está creciendo? Deja mucho dinero. ¿Cómo puede haber dos mil, mil, dos mil laboratorios con tantas patrullas de tantos Porque policiales? ¿Ustedes pagan a ellos? Sí. Mira, aquí la mayoría de gobierno que no sea soldado, marina, federal, ya de ahí para adelante nos apoyan los demás. Mi trabajo es el policía municipal. Ya tengo más de 25 años en este trabajo. This officer, who asked to be identified only as Comandante Alpha, is the deputy police chief in a town on one of the main drug corridors in northern Mexico. ¿Tiene la sensación que la policía trabaja para quién? Pues, en gran parte trabajan para el narcotráfico. ¿Y por qué lo hacen? ¿Por qué piensa que...? Por miedo. El mismo con usted. Que uno nada más se tapa la, los ojos y mira pasar mira, o ve otras cosas. Pues es, nada más pues se retira uno de ahí del lugar y deja las cosas. Porque si trata uno de hacer algo, pues no, los mismos jefes lo, lo castigan a uno y, o, los, o nos mandan callar para siempre. ¿Estamos hablando de cuánto? No vale la pena la cantidad que ofrecen. 500 mil dólares. ¿Y usted recupera? Pues cada vez que nos tenemos que hacer de la... Como que no vimos nada. ¿Por qué? Porque... Pues todos tenemos familia. Ya está muy, muy avanzado esto aquí. Ya está muy infiltrado todo. Desde el mismo gobierno, desde, el, desde lo más alto del gobierno de la República. ¿Hasta dónde? Hasta el presidente de la República. Outgoing President Enrique Peña Nieto vehemently denied any involvement with Mexico's drug lords. But he left office deeply unpopular largely because of his failure to reduce violence. Uno de los grandes retos para este y como estoy seguro lo será para el próximo gobierno, el tema de la inseguridad. Yo soy el primero en reconocer que si bien tuvimos avances, no lo suficientes para alcanzar el gran objetivo de dar seguridad. There were more than 31,000 homicides last year, and this year is on track to be even worse. in part because the capture of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman has left a power vacuum that rival cartels are now slaughtering each other to try to fill. Grizzly displays like this decapitated cartel hitman left on a Guadalajara street corner last month have become almost commonplace. The new president, López Obrador, campaigned on a promise to bring a fresh approach to the drug war but faced with this overwhelming brutality, he's reverted to his predecessor strategy, throwing the military at the cartels. We've been out with the military now for about two hours, and they've been putting up all these checkpoints and looking into cars and people. So far, they haven't found anything. ¿Y cómo está la situación ahora? Acá. Desde que llegamos, la situación bajó, bajó los índices de violencia bastante. Este, fue rebasada, la seguridad pública fue rebasada. Ya era de, demasiado y obviamente pues, se le salió un poco de control. Ya al llegar nosotros volvió a tener más orden. Los números hablan de otra cosa. Dicen que tienen cada vez más poder, cada vez más dinero y cada vez más violencia. Bueno, eso es relativo a comparación de las actividades que nosotros realizamos. Pero usted piensa que ustedes están, están haciendo una diferencia por estar presente. Por sí, claro que sí. Acá? But on the U.S.-Mexico border, it's business as usual. Crystal meth from the offices in Culiacán is packed up in safe houses like these. Estas, de estas se van a ir 10 libras a Las Vegas mañana. Como vamos a tratar de que se empaque bien para que se vaya en sin Sí, lastimamos. Sin lastimar. Pues así como viene, hay que mandarlo para que se vaya. Una capa de mini y uh -huh. cuando vaya. 
The smugglers say as many as 80% of the packages reach their destination. Special teams employed by the cartels run packages into the U.S. Ahorita traigo metafetaminas, traigo cristal, cocaína, metafetaminas. Y, y entonces te cargas con eso y cómo haces a pasar? Ajá, a pie tengo que cruzar. Ellos me cuidan. La, la migra misma nos está luchando. La migra te ayuda Ellos también. Mismos. La migra americana. Ellos mismos nos ayudan. Les pegamos un buen billete. Tiene miedo porque sabemos dónde vive su familia. De hecho, ya lo hemos visitado varios veces. Pero tenemos que estar listos para poder cruzar porque nomás hay una oportunidad. ¿Por dónde viene el operativo? Ok. Oh, no, no, hay cuidado con ellos, no hay cuidado. Están los muchachos al 100. ¿Qué, ¿Piensas que va a cambiar alguna cosa con el nuevo gobierno? No, no, no va a cambiar nada. Todos los, todos los gobernantes se venden. For being an investigation into how the most powerful person in the world got his job, the Mueller probe often seems to be centered around guys who are just not that powerful. Guys who are, you might say, fringe characters. Names like Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, and everyone's favorite minor Azerbaijani pop star, Amin Agalarov. The latest entry in the gallery of possibly sinister peripheral players is a gentleman named Jerome Corsi, who may have been the link between WikiLeaks and the Trump campaign by way of Corsi's notorious friend, Roger Stone. Corsi has spent a good chunk of his life claiming to be an investigative journalist. What he actually does is to spread conspiracy theories to make Democrats look bad. Remember Swift Boat Veterans for Truth, the group that claimed that John Kerry had lied about his service in Vietnam and helped tank his presidential bid? Corsi is one of the guys who helped push that false narrative into the mainstream. John Kerry cannot be trusted. Corsi even co-wrote a best-selling book about it. Corsi also continues to spread the enduring racist lie that Barack Obama wasn't born in the United States. He is one of the original birthers, and he still stands by it. I do not believe Barack Obama has a legitimate 1961 original birth certificate. I don't think it could ever be produced. I defy you to produce it or anybody else. Birtherism, you might remember, helped put Donald Trump on the presidential political map back in 2011. It was a tactic that political opportunist Roger Stone encouraged Trump to use. And yes, Stone and Corsi are friends, which brings us back to the legal trouble Corsi might be in. It stems from an email exchange between the two men. In July of 2016, Stone, an informal advisor to the Trump campaign, asked Corsi to establish a link with WikiLeaks. When the special counsel interviewed Corsi about this, he said he declined the request. Based on the documents Corsi himself released, Mueller's office believes Corsi is lying. According to Mueller, Corsi not only did try to get in contact with WikiLeaks, but he told Stone he had received word that the, quote, friend and embassy plans two more dumps, impact plan to be very damaging, end quote. Corsi told MSNBC that he corrected the record on the interactions with Stone after he was able to access his old emails. When he wrote about more emails coming, those belonging to Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, that was something he just figured out on his own. Special counsel couldn't believe that. They said, Dr. Corsi, we've got emails. You knew it was Podesta. You knew he was going to drop them in October. You knew how he was going to drop them. You knew what, almost what they included and what they contained. I said, yes, that's true. Well, how'd you know? I figured it out. It's unclear whether Mueller will indict Corsi or whether Corsi really has any helpful information in Mueller's quest to explain what happened during the 2016 election. Even if Corsi does, he may not be a credible enough witness to be helpful, which leaves Jerome Corsi as a name we're either all going to forget in six months or one that we'll remember for a long, long time. That's because big time scandals tend to hinge on small time players who may not have had all the answers, but have one or two that cause conspiracies to unravel something Corsi, a proud conspiracy theorist, should know something about.
GB. She's an ASMR artist. ASMR is a massive online video genre where people whisper and scratch household objects to relax viewers, combat insomnia, hope you feel like you're ready to sleep. or give what devotees call the tingles. So this is your channel. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> GBA ASMR. Uh, when I was in high school, I had a terrible time falling asleep. And one day, I think I found way back then, it was called the Whisper Community instead of ASMR. And I was like, I get that. And I didn't think that was something that anyone else felt. So you get the tingles. I get the tingles. Yeah, I do. Um, so I started watching them. And after that, I fall asleep to them every single night. GB launched her own ASMR YouTube channel two years ago, which now has more than 1.5 million subscribers. How much do you make doing ASMR? It's against YouTube um, like policy to actually disclose it. You make enough to live, though. Definitely. ASMR is her full-time job, and the ad revenue from her videos is the highest right after she posts. Until recently. This is like a huge video, like almost 2.5 million views. This one actually went trending on YouTube. Wow. So it was on their trending page. And, and it was now doing great. And now they're demonetizing it. In July, GB saw that YouTube started removing ads from some of her posts. Other ASMR artists say it started even earlier. YouTube told them that their material isn't ad friendly since it's sexually suggestive content. So this is confirmed by manual review, which means that a human being watched it and said, yep, this violates something. Hmm. So the first object I pick up is like a bag. The cherry bag. What's this? That's a, a case Tupperware? of bobby pins. Mm. Mm. Seems fairly innocuous. No, no. <laughs> this, is, this is some lewd stuff. <laughs> If you're saying that this is sexual, if you're saying this is like explicit, like I just don't get it. Can you point out to me where, like what's wrong with this? They're like, focus on body parts. I'm like, what, my face? Like entirety right. of YouTube would be shut down, like. It only affected about 5% of GB's posts and all of them have since been re-monetized, which means basically YouTube was wrong. We reached out to YouTube and they said they wouldn't comment on individual cases, but they're happy with the low error rate and their algorithm is improving daily. YouTube isn't alone in interpreting ASMR videos as a weird sex thing. PayPal and Patreon have also been cracking down on them. And a few months ago, China effectively banned them, claiming they're pornographic, and they were dropped from a number of platforms. Do you think there's a misconception about the sensuality of ASMR? There are certainly arguments for adding sexuality into your ASMR. People add their own flares to whatever they do, whether it's to get more views or whether it's because that's what they genuinely like. My name's Morgana. But at its core, ASMR is, is not sexual. Like, you know, somebody drawing your picture and like staring at your face is intimate. It's not sexual. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad to see you today. Many devotees look to Bob Ross, the 80s cult classic painter, as the original and ASM artist. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents in our world. With the soothing sounds of his paintbrush scraping the canvas as he painted his happy little trees. Now then decide where all these little duders live. Doesn't seem very sexual. Let's sign this rascal. There are, however, creators who post sexually explicit material on porn sites and others who have clean videos on YouTube have Patreon accounts where they sell access to explicit videos. But people have made porn out of almost anything. Unfortunately, it hurts other creators because ASMR isn't like well enough understood yet for there to be like the distinction of, it's not always a sex thing. If somebody wants to make it sexual, they can, like anything in the world. One group of determined online trolls have made it their mission to brand almost all ASMR creators as purveyors of pornography and take them down. Users on 8chan, the self-described darkest corner of the internet, have violently threatened and stalked ASMR artists, including GB. She and her friends and family have had to anonymize her identity and location on all of their social channels. I can't talk about it, because if you talk about it, then they go after you, you know, but 
like, talk, we, we never talk about it because we don't want people to go on there and read what they're saying because it's posting all of our information. And like the end things, they're like posting my house, they're posting like my family, they're posting like everything. So it's just like not something that we ever talk about. So the less that you can shine a light on it, the, the more protected you feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's something that I definitely like wouldn't want to cover you, yeah. mm -hmm. which is hard because I'm sure you're covering it. Like, you can't win. You cannot win on the internet. Mm. Win or lose, GB is continuing to live online. She now streams regularly on Twitch and makes money off product placements in her videos in addition to the ad revenue from YouTube. And she's still creating tingles off inanimate objects for all her loyal followers. <laughs>